Hello there. How are you doing? Don't ask how I'm doing. I've been up. I just, by the time I remember to do a video, I'm down. So I thought, why don't I just do one? It's not the best setup. My face is all smooshy. And I'm really flushed tonight. And I don't, I don't know why, but all this is kind of hot. I don't know why. So I was going to tell you a story. I was going to tell you a story about something that actually happened. It's a really weird thing, too. It's some. It's almost unbelievable. But, okay. Here it goes. A long time ago. Well, not that long. A couple decades ago. Maybe longer, actually. See, this illness has been around forever, basically, but with different names. Every time they found it, they named it something different, so it was really hard to communicate um, among doctors. And it just got named something different every time it popped up, so... Myalgic encephalomyelitis uh, is what the World Health Organization called it. And frankly, they have never wavered from that name because there's very little need to. Myalgic encephalomyelitis includes brain and spine and inflammation. Um, the fact that there are immune components and metabolic components are not in the name, but they are integral in the disease. I personally call it neuroimmune metabolic failure because the parts of cells that should be producing energy as a normal part of life for a normal person, it's constantly happening. But for us, it's not. If you recall mitochondria, even if you don't, they're part of cells. Cells have mitochondria in the body, and uh, in, in, those mitochondria are the, are the generators of energy. But they need things to do that. They need glucose, oxygen, certain minerals to function properly. So now with even more advanced testing, and it's still advancing, they have found inflammation in the brain, they have found inflammation in the spinal nerve roots. Uh, cardiac problems. Immune problems. But that kind of makes sense because your whole body is made up of cells. Your symptoms are going to mirror which cells have been affected most by this. And some patients are going to be different from others because some patients have these cells affected versus other cells affected. But in no way is this a psychiatric disorder. It's a physical disorder. Thousands of studies have proven it to be so over the last decades. And, and yet...
Here's where the story begins. Once upon a time, there were a couple disability companies. And they took a cold, hard look at this disease. They took a look at the incidence And what they concluded was that if they were forced to pay claims on disability due to this illness, myalgic encephalomyelitis, they would go bankrupt. Okay. So they make that determination. Now, no disability, no insurance company wants to go bankrupt. Frankly, I'm still a little bleary on how disability companies work because profit. <laughs> profit, profit versus helping disabled people. Hmm. I, I'm still a little fuzzy on how that works, and I've worked in insurance. But okay. They decided the only way to avoid going bankrupt was to gaslight the world. Gaslight the world. Gaslight patients. Gaslight the medical community. Gaslight everyone into thinking that this physical illness was actually psychological. They hired very high-powered psychiatrists to publish papers and do studies about the psychology of illness and how illness behaviors perpetuate disability. They made a whole thing. They made a whole structure of studies and a whole structure of articles about this at the behest of these insurance companies, these disability insurance companies. And That's not the most evil part of it. Here's the really evil part of it. They established a study, really multiple studies, on treating patients with this with psychiatric therapies like cognitive behavioral therapy, which can be helpful for disabled people, but that's not how they did this. Not to help deal with a very real illness, but actually to convince patients that the illness wasn't real and that their thinking was keeping them sick. When that isn't true. They developed graded exercise therapy in addition to the CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. Graded exercise therapy for people with ME, myalgic encephalomyelitis, is a disaster. It makes all the symptoms worse, much worse. 
makes people sicker. People who went into the studies for graded exercise therapy with moderate ME ended up in severe to profound ME because there aren't many illnesses on this planet where exercise hurts you, but this is one of them. Exercise can hurt you. Overdoing it will hurt you. Overdoing it will cause your symptoms to be worse. The fact that they included great exercise therapy in their picture of therapy for this disease, knowing it made the patients worse and more disabled, <laughs> on purpose, on purpose, that people who went through their therapies would end up worse and yet not covered because of their thinking that it was psychological, so disability companies would deny the claims. <laughs> the level of evil involved in that is so stunning to me. Not just that it was going to make them go bankrupt. Not just that they hired psychiatrists to gaslight the whole globe into thinking that a physical illness was actually psychological. Not just that. But to instill these, this therapy, this graded exercise therapy, to make the patients worse on purpose. The evil of that is a level of evil that I cannot even wrap my head around. And I've seen evil. I've seen evil. We see it every day on the news. But this is so cold and so calculating. <laughs> I It's beyond my capacity for rational thought. It angers me so much. People have died. People die of it. In the severe to profound category, you can end up with organ failure, literal organ failure, because your cells are not producing energy on such a widespread basis that there's organ failure, cardiac problems, and cancer. Those are the three out of four causes of death most likely in myalgic encephalomyelitis, and they do occur in the most severe cases more often. The fourth cause of death is suicide because people decide when they are stuck in a dark room, when, when you're severely or profoundly ill with this, you cannot tolerate light, you cannot tolerate sound, you cannot tolerate the presence of another human being in your room without having a crash and all your symptoms getting worse. You can't. You can't work. You can't read. You can barely write. There have been people who are severely impaired who have written articles, and it took them months to write those articles. Months. Because they're severely impaired. Because they can't tolerate light, sound. Well, what, what does a, compu a computer or a phone do at? to you. It shoves light in your face. The level of evil inherent in promoting graded exercise therapy 
for an illness where exercise will make you worse is a level of evil that I am really having a hard time wrapping my head around. Makes me so angry. Now, you know, I, I've mentioned before that my ME is mild, which means I can read, I can tolerate light, and I can tolerate sound. I can tolerate being in a room full of people. Now, not for very long, and I will crash, but I can do it. But my crashes aren't nearly what they are for the severely impaired of this illness. Not nearly. They're very rough on me, but I'll tell you this. I'm still lucky to be mild. There is a document in Britain that is sealed, I believe, for 40 years from now. I'll be dead by the time it's opened. I really need that document unsealed and released. I really need to know what's in it. I think everyone needs to know what's in it. But that's going to be up to uh, Prince Charles and the future king to get that released because I don't know who else can actually force it to be released when it's sealed. I have no idea. It's an uncommon level of evil. I mean, there's evil, everyday evil, but this, <laughs> on such a wide scale, so wide that advanced countries in this world still have trouble accepting that it's real, that it's physical, that it requires physical attention, that it requires care. A lot of patients get no care at all, none, no support. They lose their jobs, they lose their families, their schooling, their homes. The, f the fact that people are living alone with this, as I do, but severe, That's that's another level of evil that I can't wrap my head around, but that's, I guess, for another day. So that's my weird little story. It's true. It's actually happened, and that delayed the research on this illness for decades. Delayed it, belayed it. Sidelined it. There were doctors dedicated to this 40 years ago when I got sick. And they got little, well, no support at all from the AMA, no support from the CDC, no support from the NIH, none. But you know what? They kept seeing patients. They kept documenting what they saw. And they kept with it. God bless them. God bless all of them. There's a little story. And that's enough for now. But thanks for listening. Bye-bye.